Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the first advanced lab of this training series using UN Biodiversity Lab to monitor the pulse of the planet. My name is Amber McCollum, and I will be providing you with an introduction to this session. And then I will hand it over to my colleagues, Dee Zhang with the UNDP and Oscar McDermott Long with UNEP WCWM. We are honored to have all of our partners here today and throughout the training series that we've had over the past few weeks. Before we get started, I wanted to highlight a few very important logistics to ensure everything runs smoothly. Simultaneous interpretation is available from English to French and Spanish and vice versa, as our presenters will be speaking in English. We um, wanna give a big thanks to our interpreters, Marissa Martinez and Diego Rodriguez in French and Thais in Pedro in Spanish. Um, we're really glad that you're with us today. To activate interpretation, you can click on the interpretation icon at the bottom of your screen and choose your preferred language. My colleague Andreas is dropping the screenshot of this into the chat. We suggest that you choose one channel and stay on it for the duration of the session to avoid technical issues. I would also like to recommend both speakers and participants speak slowly as this greatly assists our interpreters and supports the flow of conversations. Is everyone okay with interpretation? Um, if so, please give me a thumbs up so that I know it's working for everyone. Okay, I'm seeing a couple of thumbs up, maybe a hand or two raised. Okay, looks like we're good, I'll, I'll continue on. I also wanted to highlight a few other things. If you have technical issues, including with interpretation, please send a private Zoom message to my colleague, Andreas, or send him a WhatsApp at the number on the screen. He will help you to resolve your issues quickly as possible. So please don't use the group chat for any technical issues. Go ahead and um, use that um, Zoom message or the WhatsApp number. Thank you, Andres. For the session, your microphones will be muted um, and this will help ensure that all of our speakers can be heard clearly. If you want to ask a question, you have two options. You can type your question into the Zoom chat box in English, French, or Spanish, or during the discussion, you can virtually raise your hand in the control panel, and then we will open your microphone for you during the discussion segments of today's session. You can ask your questions in English, French, or Spanish. However, we ask that you ensure you're on the correct channel so that interpretation can proceed smoothly. Finally, we encourage you to rename yourself in Zoom with your name and country so we can see where everyone is from. As you're probably familiar with at this point for this training, we have two types of sessions. Our intermediate sessions, which will all be held on GoToWebinar. And this is where you use that same registration link to join. These sessions have consisted of lectures and case study examples, and they are an hour and a half long. And um, the first two sessions were held on April 14th and April 21st. And the final session for the intermediate sessions will be held tomorrow on April 28th. Note that for the intermediate sessions, we will present the same material each day in English, Spanish, and French at different times. So please sign up for the language of your choice for those. We will also have two labs um, that are being brought to you via Zoom. So you're in the first lab here today. And for each of the advanced sessions, there is a separate registration. So you had a registration for this session, and then there's a registration for the um, second advanced lab as well. The um, registration for these sessions has been capped um, at around 250 participants um, and 150 participants for the second session. 
Um, so um, we do have a limit on the folks here so that we can really interact with you all um, and engage. And, and as you're noticing, these are presented in, in English with simultaneous interpretation in French and Spanish. So all of the course materials can be found on the RSET training website. And you can see the link to that website here on this slide. This includes the recordings of the sessions via links to our YouTube channel, also the presentation materials and the homework. My colleague Andreas is also dropping the links for these um, websites into the chat as well. I also want to encourage you all to type your questions into the chat box along the way, and we will get to as many as possible at the end. We will also post your questions and answers on our website after the training. So if we don't get to one of your questions um, during the session here, you have a question later on, you can email myself or my colleagues at our email addresses um, shown here at the bottom of the slide. Great. For all, for all of um, you participating in the intermediate sessions, we have shared details about the homework and certificates um, during those sessions. Uh, for this ad advanced lab, you're required to do three things in order to receive your certificate of completion. First, you should have already registered on the UN Biodiversity Lab. Um, so that was homework assignment one by today. So if you've not done that, you can do it today during this session. Second, you must be here for our live session. So if you're listening to this now, you're already completing that step. And finally, you must submit homework assignment two for this first advanced lab to support at unbiodiversitylab.org by May 11th. So you have two weeks to complete that homework. Um, and we will share the certificates for these advanced sessions by the end of May, if you um, meet all of those criteria. So here's a general overview of the intermediate sessions. Um, we've already had two of these already um, that went really, really well. So um, we're, we'll be having the fine, third and final intermediate session um, tomorrow. And for all of these sessions, as I mentioned, you can view the recordings of the presentations um, and get all of the materials on the RSET website. So um, to, do please join us for the, the final intermediate session tomorrow. So today, as I mentioned, is our first advanced lab and we're really focusing on mastering the UNBL public platform. The UN Biodiversity Lab team will provide a deep dive with hands-on exercises. Note that the second lab, which is already full, um, is on mastering the UNBL secure workspaces. And, and that will be offered um, at the same time next week on May 4th. Great, so let's take a look at our agenda for today. Uh, my colleague Andreas is dropping the detailed agenda into the chat, um, but you can see the overview of the agenda here on the slide. This session will begin with a review of homework assignment one. So most of you hopefully have already completed that first homework assignment. And we will also have the opportunity to review any questions you have for homework assignment two, which I mentioned is due on May 11th. Next, we will have the chance to explore several co-led exercises which will take you through various functionalities of the UNBL public platform. For each, the UNBL team will walk you through the steps and then we'll have time for you to work through the exercise on your own. And then you can ask questions as they come about as you work through that exercise. So please note that for all of the elements of this lab, we will be closely following on, along with the lab instructions. Um, so we have that document that we shared in advance of the lab. It's really essential that you have this document open and on your screen so that you can follow along and take advantage of the working sessions and ask questions as you have them and really um, work through those while we're all together. Um, my colleagues are sharing this again in the chat in the English 
French and Spanish. So you should have links to all of that information there. Great, so um, that's a little overview of how things will run today. So now I'd like to hand it over to Di Zeng, who will start us off with a review of the homework. So over to you, Di. Thank you, Emma. We'll start with the, a demo of the homework assignments. Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining our advanced lab on the UNBL public platform. I'm Dijan from UNBP. Last week after the training session, we sent a homework assignment to each of you to help you take out the first step of visiting and using UNBL by your own. Now let's take a few minutes to review these two assignments. I am pretty sure you all have done a great job. Just in case you need more guidance, I now will do a brief live demo on the homework. Then we'll open the floor to you to feedback and ask any questions you may have. Our first assignment here is to register an account with UNBL. To do that, first, if you're at the homepage, click on the data tab of the website and then select the launch button to access the data app. Currently on this page, I am not logged in. I'm still able to view all the global data sets on the public platform, but having an account gives you more access to the data. For example, when I click on any place without login, I am not able to clip and export the raster layers in the range of my place. So to register, click on the account icon on the top right hand corner of the screen and then click on sign in. And then click on sign up to enter your email, your password, name, country, and institute. Take a few minutes to read our terms of use. If you agree with all the content there, click on this chat box and then sign up. You will receive an email for you to verify the account in a few minutes, then follow the instructions there to verify your account. Once you have a verified account, you can log in with their email address and password you set to access the platform. Now that I've logged in the platform, when I click on the places, you can see there is a three dot icon shows up to clip and export the raster layers. And there is also a profile page for you to change all the registered information. If you want to log out the platform, just click on sign out here. Now let's look at our second assignment. Produce a map of the biodiversity in techness index of your country. Through this task, you will gain the ability to access and visualize the global data on UNBL within your places of interest. To start with, find your country in places. In my case, it's China, and then click on the name of your country to zoom in. Once you zoom in, you will see on the left panel, there pops up eight dynamic metrics. Now on the top of the dynamic metrics, there is biodiversity intactness index. Click on show on map. The map will be loaded to your map view. Next, we can produce a map. You can use the screenshot function on your computer to do that. Remember, the map should include basic mapping elements, including a legend of the relevant data layers and a skill bar. There are more detailed mapping standards on the homework guidance document. We also require you to use the correct citations. When you click on the layer info, you will find the full citation of each data layer. Well, 
Now let's take a look at the maps we have received from you, shall we? The first one we received is from Barbados and Burkina Faso. We also have a beautiful map from Indonesia and then Kenya. And this one is from Stefan. I like this styling. And this one looks like the kind of map you will find in the national report. So great job, everyone. And if you haven't submitted your maps yet, don't worry. We will still be open till the 11th May. Now, let's hand the floor back to you. Does anyone have any questions or feedback? Is there anything you want to share with the group? We want to hear from you. Now we had a view of the demo of the homework assignment. We have five minutes for questions on either of these homework assignments. And beside the homework I displayed in the demo, we have recently received more beautiful maps from many countries like Peru, Egypt, and Ecuador. And I want to take this chance to thank you all for actively participating in the exercises. And as a reminder, all the detailed steps are in the lab sheet, which my colleague Andres and Marion just dropped into the chat about. So now please feel free to raise your hand or to add your questions to the chat. Uh, let's see. We have um, 87 people in Zoom now and uh, people are introducing themselves. We have participants from Chile, from Nigeria, Costa Rica, um, and Mongolia. Awesome. If you have any questions since we're on Zoom, feel free to raise your hand and open your mic and speak to us. Or you can just send your question to the chat. While we look for any questions and comments, and please keep introducing yourself in the chat. I'd also like to say that we also encourage you to retweet your map, to tweet your map and hashtag your biodiversity lab on Twitter. And when we see that or when we see it, we're very likely to feature your work and retweet. Um, I see a question in Spanish. May I ask my colleague Consina to read the question? Sure, D. Eh, la pregunta es, eh, buen día. It's a question about the homework. I am Darío Tavernig. I'm a, a cartography expert from the National Water Institute in Santa Fe, Argentina. Uh, what is the deadline for homework one? For submittal of homework one. Thank you for your question. Uh, like Amber just introduced, we uh, to receive your certificate, you must submit your homework assignments, both one and two, before 11th May. So you still have time to do it. And uh, remember to submit this assignment to our support email. I'm going to drop our um, email address in the chat. Gracias. Um, I see one more question in Spanish. Um, can consider uh, help reading? Thank you. Nos consultan di cuando. When will this session be uploaded? I guess the recording of the session. When will it be shared and uploaded? Oh, let me take advantage, uh, Dee. There's another question. Uh, it says it's also in Spanish. It says, when I select my country and I have to access the different layers, I'm not able to see some of the layers. So what do I have to do for to see the layers on the map? That's your question. Um, about the first one, the recording will be I, available. I have a question, one. please. Sorry, I have a question. Uh, please. The floor is yours. Um, the map you displayed, um, and in cartography, I think there is a standard for 
for map uh, production. So um, I have seen the one you displayed and you, you said it's the one that um, has the, uh, the standard that you prefer. So I couldn't see the scale bar that you mentioned, sorry, in the map. Thank you for the question. Uh, if you have opened the URL version app on your computer right now, uh, you can look at the right bottom uh, side of the screen. So under the map control bars, there is um, a small scroll bar at the right side of the terms of use that says um, that is marked in kilometers. So that one is uh, a scale bar we use on the UNBOT or the lab. And when you capture the map, you can include that scale bar in your map. Um, if you have the, uh, if you have opened the web page, uh, you can have a look and see if you can see it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let me go back to the uh, former two question. The first one, when will the recording be available? Uh, I believe after this session, it will soon be available on the NASA RSET web, uh, web page. Um, I, I can already see our uh, two intermediate sessions uh, last week. So I think um, later this or next week, the recording will be available online. And the second question, um, I remember it's when uh, when you select your country, you are not able to see the layers, right? Um, I wonder if you have done the step of uh, activate this map to your map view. To do this, if you you want to load the map at the left panel, one of the dynamic metrics, uh, just click on Show on Map under the name of the map layer. And if you are viewing the layer from the layers list directly, there is a toggle bar on the uh, right side of the name of the layer. You need to click on the toggle bar. If the toggle bar tends to blue, it means it's activated and it will be loaded to the map view soon. And let me know more um, details on how you access this map uh, and see if you have, uh, still have the problem. Great. Thank you so much, Dee. I, I think we do need to move on to the next um, portion of the lab today. Um, and I did want to remind everyone to please um, type in your questions in the chat or raise your hand if you'd like to do audio and then we can um, make sure to go to you um, if you'd like to do it that way. So thank you, Dee. And I, I do think we need to go to the next section. So thanks again. Thank you, Amber. Uh, now I'd like to turn it over to my colleague, Oscar, uh, Oscar Nachter-Madlon from the UN Environment Program World Conservation Monitoring Center to introduce our first exercise for the lab. Oscar, over to you. Good afternoon. My name is Oscar McDermott Long, and I'm going to be leading you through the first co-led exercise in today's lab. Today, we're going to be looking at how you might use the UN Biodiversity Lab to create a map of the World Database on Protected Areas and Forest Loss in your country of choice. So a little bit of background before we begin. The UN Biodiversity Lab offers the ability to overlay multiple layers and to help you generate insight for action. In this exercise, we are going to look at protected areas in your country and also the forest loss in your country. We're going to overlay those two, these two layers, uh, which can provide initial insight into forest loss within protected areas in your country and help you answer questions such as, why might these losses be occurring? Are they the result of natural events such as wildfire or result of illegal or even legal managed logging? How do these losses relate to the management of, wild, uh, of, management of protected areas? And could lack of appropriate management and resources be contributing to them? UNBL also offers the ability to clip raster layers of interest in your country and to download them for use in desktop GIS 
where allowed by the data provider. Please note though that this feature is currently being updated and will be available again shortly. Um, UN Biodiversity Lab can also uh, be used to directly access full global data sets from the original data provider. The aim of today's exercise is for you to practice finding places and layers of interest on UNBL and to learn how you can modify the map view on UNBL and to explore how to download layers of interest. The exercise builds on your homework assignment and enables you to explore the different functionalities available on UNBL to style and customize the map as well as to download geospatial data layers. So with no further ado, let's begin. The very first thing we have to do is to um, choose our area of interest. So being from Ireland, I am going to choose Ireland. So once we zoom into our country of choice, we can see that we have the um, dynamic metrics uh, dashboard on the left hand side. And we can see various different dynamic metrics which are being calculated for our country of choice. So I'm going to scroll us down so that I can have a quick look at the tree cover loss dynamic metric. And I want to see the data of, um, that is used in this dynamic metric. So I'm going to click show on the map. In addition to that, I've already said that I want to look at that in comparison to protected areas. So I can scroll up a little bit to the protected areas dynamic metric and also click show on map. It's worth noting that you can also access these layers by searching within this space. So WDPA, for example, you can find it nice and easily. But I want to focus on this space for the moment. So we have our um, map showing Ireland and we have our two data layers, the World Database Protected Areas and the Global Forest Change data set. But now we can play around with the map controls of the map. So the first offering that we can look into is the fact that UN Biodiversity Lab offers two different base map types. The first being grayscale, as you can see here, but we also have the ability to toggle on the satellite base map, as you can see here. Um, in addition to that, we have the ability to play around with the labels on the map. So we can see here that the map is becoming quite busy with uh, place labels. So we can turn those off. We might also be interested in the road infrastructure in an area. How might that impact on protected areas? So we can toggle that on. So we, but I'm going to toggle that off for the moment and I'm going to play around with the grayscale map. Because what I want to show you next is how you might change how you can visualize these uh, two data layers together. So we're going to ensure that you have the best view of these data layers. And what we can see here uh, straight off the bat is that the WDPA is drawing on top of the forest change um, data set and that we can actually see what's going on below. So the first thing we might want to do is to change the order of how these data sets draw on the map. And we can do that by hovering over these six dots on the uh, legend and we can drag our data set to appear above as you can see here and if you look at the map now we can see that the forest last year um, the data set the forest global forest change data set is now drawing on top of the wdpa and we can see much better what is going on below another method of being able to kind of explore um, um, and visualize data sets together is to play with their opacity. So what I would like you guys to do, those who are following along, is to play with the opacity of these two layers. So we could drop the forest change right down, for example, and you can see instantly that that's not a very, uh, a very good um, way of visualizing the layer. We recommend actually that you keep the forest layer up at about 80% opacity. Um, and in addition to that, we would probably advise playing around with the WDPA and reducing that to something like 70. So that if this is being drawn on something else, you can actually see what is going on below it. So I'd like those that are following along at home, I'd like to invite you to copy your URL at this point and to um, copy it into the questions and answers box so that we can see the type of maps that you've been making.
The next uh, thing I'd like to walk you through is to uh, try and clip and export the forest loss layer to the range of your country. Registered users of UMBL are able to clip raster layers to an area of interest and to download them for use in on offline GIS software. This function allows you to access the underlying data while avoiding the bandwidth and storage required to download and work with global data sets. As I noted earlier, unfortunately, this functionality is currently very limited, um, but I will walk you through the process at the moment. So to clip the layer to your country and download it, what we do is on the pla uh, places uh, panel, as you see here on my map, click on the three dots um, icon next to your country's name and click on clip and export layers. Next, we want to type in global forest change, and we can actually see that the, uh, the search suggests the layer for us. And then we want to select the layer within that that we want to look at. So I would like to look at forest loss year 2000 to 2020 in the drop down list. So I'm going to click that, the first one here. And you can see here that it offers you a PNG download of this. And as I mentioned before, um, unfortunately, this um, functionality is quite limited at the moment, so it is not working for GeoTIFFs, but just the PNG functionality at this stage. So then we click download. So as I mentioned, this is um, functionality for clipping rasters, um, but we might also want to look at uh, how we can access the full uh, WDPA data set. So how do we go about doing this? Well, if we're interested in accessing the full WDPA data set, what we can do is we can go and look at the information about that data set. So if we click on the info, layer info uh, tab against the WDPA, we can see here that we have the ability to click on download the data set. What this does is it redirects you and brings you, in this case, to the protected planet uh, where it offers you the ability to download the data set in full. In this space, we can see that they offer the ability to download the shapefile, file geodatabase, or even look at the Aerosary web service. Great, now that everyone has seen me uh, running through this um, uh, lab, it'd be great to kind of spend 15 minutes and look at running the exercise on your own. Um, I want to remind everyone that the steps are detailed in the lab sheet that was shared earlier, and my colleague Andres is going to drop this into the chat again now. We encourage those of you working through it uh, to do it at your own pace and to ask questions as they come up. Um, if you have a question about a step, likely someone else does too, so please don't hesitate to ask it um, and just raise your hand or put your question in the chat. Um, we'll answer the questions as they come in and give you time to work. You'll have until about 40 minutes past the hour to work through this exercise. And at this point, we'll move on to the next one. Thank you. So I can see a question in the chat from James here. Does the clip require a feature or can I just use the map extent? Um, no, it does require a feature. It's an area and it's against an area of interest. So it really defines the area of interest on the, um, the feature that you're interested in looking at rather than the map extent. And I believe we have a question in Spanish here as well. Um, so it'd be great if that could be read out in Spanish for me. Osgur, claro que sí. Eh, la pregunta dice, yes, estoy... Oscar, one second. I am trying to download the information of the layers for Ecuador but we do not see the option uh, of the three uh, dots that you mentioned in the video. So um, without being able to uh, see what your, your screen, um, my, my estimate would be that you actually haven't signed into the um, UN Biodiversity Lab space at this point. Um, as Dee showed in her video prior to that, um, you cannot see those three dots if you are not signed into the to UN by BL. Hopefully, that's the case. Hey, and Oscar, it looks like we have a hand raised as well. 
Um, so maybe we could go to that question. Um, Hermana, you have your hand raised if you want to go off mute maybe and ask your question. Yeah, yeah good morning. Um, my question is, uh, is it possible to clip out a segment of a country, not just to have a country? Let's assume I want to say, say uh, a segment of a country, is it possible from the platform? So it is possible. Um, we do offer um, sort of uh, regional territories within countries as well where they're available. If the region of interest isn't available um, that you're interested in, it is possible to upload your own specific area. And we will be running through that in at a later stage in these labs. But the answer is yes, you can. OK, well, um, assuming I want to upload my um, area of interest, um, Am I going to use like a shift file to clip? Out the yeah, oh. effectively, yes. You'll be uploading your shape file to your secure workspace and then you use that as your area of interest and then you can use that to clip the layers that you're interested in. All right, thank you. No problem. I believe there's another question in Spanish. It would be great if we um, could get to as well. Claro que sí, Osgur. Eh, yes, Osgur. The question is from Anayatsi Sagrario Mendoza. Good morning. I'm Anayatsi. To download the data of interest for Mexico, do I have to click on the information icon so it'll take me to another page and then download the data? Is it like that? Um, thanks, Cassandra. No, I mean, it should be hopefully um, when you zoom to your country of interest, in this case, Mexico, as highlighted in the, um, in the, uh, in the video, you should see three dots against the title where your country is highlighted. And you should be able to click on that and then click on clip and export layers. And that should start that download for you. Um, if you're not seeing that, it might be a similar problem to the previous question. You may not be signed in to the uh, into UN Biodiversity Lab. <clears throat> Hopefully that answers that question. I have another question here. Um, is it OK to upload one's own GeoTIFF data to UNBL? then after customized processing on the platform, the output is exported into a GeoTIFF format. Yes, I believe um, that you can upload your own GeoTIFF um, to your MBL and then use that to be clipped by your area of interest. I, I think I've, I think I've uh, understood that question correctly, but please just highlight to me if I haven't. And again, uh, can I upload my own shapefile slash CSV to your MBL? Uh, you can upload your own uh, shapefile, yes, absolutely, to your MBL. Um, I don't know about, I don't think we can upload CSVs at this point, um, but D, please correct me if I'm wrong on that one. Um, and then there is a question about the exercises, which I believe has been answered. Thank you, Andres. And then um, um, Cassandra, is that a question in Spanish or is it just an introduction? Sorry. Nos están saludando desde Venezuela. No, um, someone's saying hello from Venezuela, that's all. <laughs> I have to apologize, my Spanish is zero, as you might have guessed. Yeah, and I think that's all the questions I see now, and I don't see any other hands raised. So if you do have a question you want to speak, uh, feel free to raise your hand and then we can call on you and you can ask your question via audio. So I see a question in uh, relation to how soon the recording of the session will be uploaded to the NASA RSET website. Um, I, um, I don't want to speak out of turn on this, but I think pretty much immediately after this session, is, is there anyone that can answer that more accurately? Yeah, I believe, give us a day maybe to make sure we get Sorry. them uploaded. Yeah. Um, but yeah, pretty shortly thereafter. Thank you, Oscar.
And it looks like we have about five more minutes for questions for this portion. Um, and I also just want to encourage everyone to um, try to follow along with the um, demo, um, along with your um, exercise document as well. It helps to sort of have both side by side um, to be able to follow along. So I do just want to remind everyone to follow along on the exercise if possible as well. And again, if you have a question for the next couple of minutes, put it in the chat or raise your hand. So I see a question here about um, whether UMBL allows for users to visualize time series data and export it into video clips. Um, I know that UMBL does allow to um, visualize time series data. In fact, you can even press the kind of play button and see the kind of change in the layer over time um, as an animated kind of uh, draw on, on the map. However, I'm, I don't think that we offer the ability to download that as a video clip at the moment. Please correct me if I'm wrong, anyone. Um, I see a question about the roads layer not drawing um, on a specific computer. I might zoom in and just make sure it's drawing for me. Um, give me a second while I reload my map. Um, is showing on my screen, uh, but it says in white lines might be not very visible for you. So if you zoom in to local level, um, you can see the lens of roads turned on and off here on my screen. Thank you, Dee. Thank you. And we have... Um, received the URL of the map um, our participants made. This one is from Acutor, um, and we also have one from Nigeria, all looking great. Fantastic. Uh, Cassandra, I believe there are a couple of other questions in Spanish in the chat now. Um, if, you, if you could uh, translate them for me, that would be brilliant. Sí. Sí, tenemos, eh, dos preguntas. Una, okay, we have two questions. One says, there are maps that are have uh, copyright restrictions and to download them, can we request that through emails? Or, and there's another question that he already downloaded uh, a PGN file. Isn't there an option for downloading that format, PGN? So um, the first to answer the first question, um, we only offer data through the lab where it has been um, allowed by the data provider. So we're not um, in con contradiction of any of the data licenses. In fact, in most of the cases, we are, we link back to the data provider. If you're trying to download the full data set, for example, um, we don't really we don't offer that as something on UN Biodiversity Lab. We don't see ourselves as a data provider, but more kind of as a facilitator. So we link back to the data providers where possible. Um, the second question in relation to the PNG, I yes, I believe that it was um, a functionality that was working previously. I believe that it is just being updated at the moment um, and that functionality will return in the near future. And then I think we, again, Cassandra, I'm afraid we're making lots of work for you today, but we have a few other questions in Spanish. No se preocupen. Sí, eh, no worries. Let me just go through them. Can I download only the area of interest in an SHP or raster format? A shape file, sorry, or raster, not this HP. Thank you. Yeah, at the moment we're only offering the ability to clip by um, uh, clip rasters by an area of interest. 
um, for um, for sort of shape shape files. We're kind of linking back to the data provider at the moment um, for accessing that uh, that in, uh, that sort of data. Um, it may be uh, something that we're looking at in the near future, but that's current the current scenario. And Oscar, we have about one more minute for questions. So maybe one final question for this section and then we'll move on. Fantastic. Cassandra. La otra pregunta que teníamos en español es eh, desde Peru. Another question, Spanish from Peru. Jose Cala is asking if it's possible to perform the analysis on the same platform as we do so on Google Earth Engine. Um, it depends on what you mean by the analysis. So at the moment, we offer the ability to calculate dynamic metri metrics directly on this uh, platform, and those are calculated on this platform. So if you were to upload your own specific area of interest, you would be able to calculate these metrics and see those against your area of interest. Um, in terms of being able to uh, like uh, run complex analysis like you can on Google Earth Engine at the moment. That currently isn't uh, the case, but we are looking at uh, developing how you can develop your own widgets in this space as well. Okay, great. Thank you, Oscar. Um, so now we'll <clears throat> transition to the next section of today's advanced lab. So hacemos so, una transición a la siguiente sección. Dee, I'll hand it over to you. Thank Dee, you. le devuelvo la palabra. Our second exercise today is to view the land cover and terrestrial biomes data within your country, and then download the summarized statistics. This exercise helps you to practice calculating dynamic metrics and explore vector layers on UNGL. We again start with finding your country. Click on the name of your country to zoom in. And now screw down the dynamic metrics at the left panel. Find global land cover ESA data. This is a land cover product from the European Space Agency. Then click show on map. Now review the calculated coverage of different types in your country as visualized on UNBL. Also, when you click on the layer legends, you can find there are multiple years data available from 1992 to the year 2020. This allows you to visit the course level land use changes happened. For example, when I zoom into my home city, Shanghai, there is a very clear human settlement expansion pattern during the last few decades. Now, next step of our exercise is for you to download these summarized statistics. Click on the arrow icon next to the layer name and download the global land cover metrics data as a CSV file. You can open this file using Excel, Numbers, or Google Sheets. Use the information in the CSV file. And now we want you to describe the forest cover and the wetland cover in your country. In this Excel, the number is displayed in square kilometers. If you want to calculate the coverage, just divide the forest area by the total area at the first column. Or you can reference the 2019 data displayed on the left panel. We hope you can share this information with us and your fellow participants in the question and answer box. Also, just to clarify a little bit, this data may not be exactly the same with your national statistics reports or the land cover data from other data products. The number here will be affected by different base maps we're using, 
the land classification method of different products, the original remote sensing pictures, um, as well as layer accuracy. Now, let's um, look at another layer, terrestrial biomes and ecoregions. Click on the layer at the top of the left panel in the search box, search terrestrial biomes, or simply type the keywords biomes. Then activate this layer to your map view by clicking on the toggle bar at the right side of the layer name. This layer is an example of the vector layers on UNBL. You can explore them in a more interactive way. This data was comprised of more than 800 terrestrial ecoregions classified into 14 biomes, such as forest, grassland, or desert. When you click on the polygons in different colors within your area of interest, an attribute table will pop up with the name of the biome as well as the ecoregion classified. And our task today stays at the biome level. Now describe the terrestrial biomes within your featured areas and you can share in the question and answer box. For example, in my case, among the 14 biomes identified, China has eight of them. We come across multiple climate zones from cold, temperate to subtropical and tropical, as well as the plateau zone. When combined with the dominant vegetation type from northeast to southwest, there are temperate conifer forest, broadleaf mixed forest, temperate grassland, uh, tropical, subtropical, moist broadleaf forest, and uh, montane grassland, as well as deserts. Now, we want to give you a few minutes to finish this exercise. Meanwhile, please think about how you could use this type of data and metrics to support your work. You can share with the team and your fellow participant in the question and answer box. You're also very welcome to open your mic and share your thoughts with us. Great. Now that you've seen me do this as this last exercise, you now have nearly 15 minutes to do this exercise on your own. I want to remind you that all the steps are detailed in the lab sheet we shared earlier, and my colleague Anders is dropping this link into the chat again. We encourage you to work through this on your own pace and ask the questions as they come up. If you have a question about any steps, don't hesitate to raise your hand or put your question in the chat. We will answer as they come and give you time to work on this. We also want to be sure to hear your thoughts on my final question about how these types of data and metrics can support your work. Please think about it and drop your feedback, your comments in the chat. And since we're on Zoom, you're always welcome to raise a hand and speak to us. You have um, until 10, 10, 5 or 10, 10 Eastern time to work through this exercise. And at this point, let's uh, look at the chat and see if we have any questions. I've seen two more questions um, in Spanish. Cassandra, can you help us to read that? Sí, pierde Thank cuidado. Di, teníamos una pregunta. Yes, Di. We have a question. Dario answered it. Uh, don't worry about that. Uh, he couldn't find the Argentinian layers, but it seems that uh, Dario was able to do so with uh, the instructions that were given, the excellent instructions. Now, Mitael Yelita Peña had asked a question. Uh, she said that she didn't understand the uh, superposed layers. She didn't understand that. The superposed layers? Superimposed. Um, 
let me. The layers uh, over um, one over the other. Oh, I see. They cross the each other. Overlay of the layers. Okay. Uh, overlay. Let me share my screen. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, let me show my screen. So uh, here is um, a map that our participant shared about um, his country, Italy. You can see on my map legend, there is three layers um, overlaid. So uh, this is what we call overlay of the layers. And on the ledge, on the map view, you can actually drag um, drag them to change the overlay order. For example, if you want to see um, global forest change on the top, then just drag the layer on the top, um, and then make sure the project area doesn't hide biodiversity in Texas index. You can also switch the opacity. Hope that answers your question. Um, and let's see if we have more. Is it possible to add the colors on the biomes to differentiate them or are they standardized? Well, um, on the public platform, we have standardized the color for you. Um, and we try to keep it as um, the same of the original data set published. So we are able to change the color, yes, uh, but the regular users are not able to change colors of the data sets on the public platform. If you have suggestions on how we should adjust the color, you're well, very welcome to um, make the suggestion. And next question I had, we can talk about how best we can use the data. Um, and next one is also in Spanish. Cassandra, do you mind read it? Señor Cassandra. Okay, our colleague from Venezuela is asking us, uh, she asked about the overlay, but now she's asking, she's saying that this is going to be very helpful. Okay, it's just a comment. Um, Exida says it's going to be very helpful for her work at the university. And Virginia says that she's going to begin research when, with LIDAR uh, for a forest area structure zone in, in Spain. She wanted to know if you could she could use this data in order to compare that with her own results once she is done with that. Great comment, uh, a great question. Yes, you can compare the data on the public platform uh, with your own data. And also, uh, you're very welcome to apply a workspace with us. In the UNBL workspace, you can actually upload your own data set, both in raster or vector formats. And we will cover this training tomorrow um, at the intermediate session part three. Also um, on the second uh, advanced lab event next week. Great comments. Uh, we, have a, a, we have a comment from uh, Garo. Um, okay, we, the, okay, pretty much their answers to the questions that you asked I, D about how do you think that these data and layer can help your own work? So it's worth getting feedback about that. Hand raised, D? There's a hand raised. Please, Imara, Imara, uh, the floor is yours. Yeah, um, sorry, you you made mention of um, say some sessions that's taking place tomorrow or next something like. That. I didn't get it right. Sorry. You you made mention of intermediate session also. If you could repeat about the session tomorrow. The session tomorrow, uh, the part three, we will mainly cover the functionalities of another important um, function of UNDL, the secure workspaces. So currently, uh, we are in the training of the public platform where you can access all the global data layers we already uploaded. Um, and you, you can, uh, what you can do on the um, on your on the website right now, and then. Um, 
the secure workspace is for those who want to upload their own data and build it together with the global data on the public platform. And we will cover it at tomorrow's training. Also, my colleague Annie is sharing the link to the chat uh, that you can access the registration page. All right, thank you. Thank you. Let's go back to our comments. Um, we have a new comment from Pat Mayer. And uh, Tenemos como te decía algunos comentarios acerca del uso de estos datos y métricas. So we have uh, comments about how the metrics and data is being used. But let me just go to the questions D. One is in Spanish, but it uh, has to do with the English question. It says, how do we may uh, develop our own map and how do we share that? Good question. Um, we, if you go back to the exercise sheet, we have um, the detailed steps of how to capture a map on UMBL and the mapping standard for a homework assignment too. Um, and there you can find more details on uh, the mapping standard as well as how to uh, citations on the map you created. Um, and maybe I can ask my colleague Andres to drop the link again to the exercise sheet. Thank you. Okay, and Dee, I think we have time for maybe one more question in this session, and then we'll, we'll move on. So maybe one more and we'll jump to the next exercise. Thank you. Sure, one more question. Um, if the, my if the, my output from UNDL was very different from our national statistics, what is the best interpretation to give to reason the difference? This is a very good question and is very important. Uh, thank you for flagging it. Uh, like I said in the demo of my exercise, the uh, exact statistics might be different with uh, the data on your national report. Um, uh, it's because uh, the data is influenced by the different data source we're using. Uh, taking the land, global land cover data, for example, the forest cover there uh, might be different to your national statistics. Um, we're using, maybe we're using different remote sensing products. Uh, we're using different classification methods uh, and maybe the data accuracy is different too. So when you're using it, you need to be um, Careful. You need to uh, include the data source uh, and uh, the the original source you cite the data. So just use it with caution and um, make it as clear as possible where this data come from. Dave, I can your just add in a little bit on that as well is one other element that might come into play is the fact that a country's national boundaries might be quite different to the um, sort of global national boundaries so we have an aggregate of national boundaries that we use but that may differ from the boundaries that are used at a national scale so that might also uh, be a reason why national statistics look slightly different exactly Thanks so much for jumping in, Oscar. And now I'd like to turn it back to you to introduce our final exercise of the session. Hi, everyone. We're on to our third and final co-led exercise of today. And we're going to explore the use of UMBL uh, protected areas data collections and how they can be used for action in your country. So a little bit of background, our UMBL data collections bring together multiple data layers to unlock the power of data to generate insights to address critical issues for nature and sustainable development. Through these data collections, we explore key policy questions for protected areas and nature-based solutions for climate. The aim of this exercise is to familiarize yourself with the resources available through the protected areas data collection and to explore its relevance for your country. During the live, this live session, I will walk you through each of the steps and we'll, at the end of the session, have a chance to engage together on Jamboards to discuss how these data collections could be used for action. So the first thing I want you to do is to navigate down through the uh, landing page on UNBL to where we can find the, uh, 
the uh, protected areas data collection and you can find it under the discover section. So we click on protected areas here. We then land on the protected areas data collection. And what I want you to do initially is first, obviously, read about the data collection, understand how it can be used and, and, uh, and how it can be explored. But what we're going to do here is initially look at the overlays of multiple data layers. So today we're going to explore the question of how much carbon are we protecting and maintaining? And where could protecting or conserving ecosystems enhance carbon sequestration? So I click on this and what you can see here is the name of the protected areas, total carbon protected areas, a little description and also the policy uh, relevance of this data collection. So I actually want to view this data to see what's going on. And um, a window pops up here and we just hold on a second while it loads. Unfortunately, I think my computer is a little bit slow today. So now you can see that the WDPA is loaded here in this space. And in addition to that, we have a number of other layers that are relevant to this. So we have the marine protected areas for the WDPA. We have below biomass carbon, below ground biomass carbon even, and we have above gr uh, ground biomass carbon. And then we also have global patterns in marine sediment carbon stocks. So all of these uh, are very carbon relevant data sets, as you might have guessed. So again, I want to have a quick look at how this looks from my country of interest, which is Ireland as before. So I'm going to click Ireland, quickly zoom to that space. And you can quickly see on the map those layers um, uh, relevant to Ireland. And again, we have the dynamic metrics on the left hand side here. Um, so I'm going to ask you now to do this for your country of choice. But then I want you to please share your thoughts in the Jamboard, as I mentioned at the beginning of this session, whether protected areas do a good job in spatially covering high carbon value areas in your country. And what is useful in this map? What, are, what other information would you need to guide your action in your country? And are there national data available to answer this question that might be more relevant for you? Okay, great. So um, to start out with, I'd like everyone just to experiment with following this, uh, the steps that you've just seen in this, um, in this lab, and you can follow along on your sheet. You don't need to worry about the questions I highlighted for the Jamboard yet. We're going to do these together once you've had a chance to explore a bit. As always, the steps are detailed in the lab sheet we shared earlier, um, but my colleague Andres is going to drop it into the chat again. Um, and again, please raise your hand or drop any questions you have into the chat as you're work, working through the exercise. And we're going to have about 10 minutes for you guys to just play around with this exercise. Osgur, tenemos una pregunta en español. Nos dice eh, de Venezuela. Es in Spanish. In Venezuela. If I have data, how do I upload it and design a map? Um, so it's actually something we're going to be touching on in the in the next um, in the next labs. It's going to be one of the exercises for the advanced lab two. Um, but essentially what you're doing is you're working in the secure workspace and you're going to be uploading your um, your uh, shapefile or whatever data set in that space. Um, I won't answer more specifically than that now, because, as I said, you will be learning about it in the next lab. Oscar, it looks like we have a question about um, network challenges and asking if the sessions will be recorded. So just a, a reminder that yes, we are recording these sessions and they will be available on the RSET website in about a day or so. So you can go back to those and reference them as you work through your exercises. Thank you. Thanks, Amber, I'd missed that.
And it looks like we have um, another raised hand. Imrana, please go ahead. Mm -hmm. I missed the la last part of the um the the map displayed. Is it the carbon? The last one is it the carbon? There's the target of Aaron. Yes, I believe so. Um, um, D, have you got the the layers up there by any chance? Yeah, I've uh, got them. I'm I'm writing there um for the protected areas, right? The protected areas. If if you're following the um, the steps in the lab sheet. Um, what you should be able to see is information about all the layers that are loaded onto the map. So if you um, quest, uh, load, a, load a layer, you can see on the screen now um, that D is showing that there are um, multiple layers displayed, but you can also then click on the information uh, icon on any of the layers, which will tell you more information about it, including um, the name, but also aspects such as where you can read more about how the the, pay, uh, the layer was developed in the paper and also links to the download for any data layer as well and gives you the citation and license, which hopefully should be all the information you need at that stage. All right, thank you. Yeah. Thanks very much, Dee. So I see a question has come in about the workspaces in the next training session. Will we be able to use it sometime later after the training is over? Yes, the answer is absolutely. Um, we are envisaging this as being your workspace moving forward. You're registered to use UN Biodiversity Lab. So that workspace will be maintained against your, your registration. Glad to see you're excited about it. It looks like we have one more question in Spanish. Maybe we can answer that and then move on to the next session, section. Thank you. Okay, so I would like to know if I could attend tomorrow's lab. Let's make side that for a minute, Suela. We have an open mic. <laughs> Um, I believe tomorrow is the intermediate session. Am I wrong, uh, D? Um, and that that I don't I I don't know what numbers have been registered for tomorrow, but I hope there might be space for you still to register. I believe that Lab Two currently is full, as was highlighted earlier at the moment. Unfortunately, that's correct, Oscar. For those that can't um, attend lab two, given that it's full, uh, will they be able to access all the um, the materials that go along with that lab so that they could follow in their own time? Yes, the materials will be made available on the RSET website as well. Um, so you can follow along. We just have a limit on the um, number of folks that can actually join for the live session. So all the materials will be available. Great. So I think with that, maybe we will move on to um, the Jamboard next. Good. Now let's move to the Jamboard. Um, okay. During the Jamboard session, you will have more chance to respond to the questions Oscar just introduced in his demo and hear from your fellow participants. 
my colleague Andres is dropping the links to the Jamboard in the chat and we ask you to follow the link to the Jamboard in your language um, and when you select your language you can follow along. Now um, my colleague Annie is sharing her screen. For those who haven't used Jamboard before, it's simple. Now look at the screen um, and uh, let's move to the next page uh, to show you how to use it. Look at the very left hand side of any screen. There is a control bar full of tools. And in the middle, you can find a post-it note icon. And that is the one we're gonna use. When you click on the post-it notes, you can uh, type your idea in this note. And after you finish the typing, click on save. The note will be saved to the Jamboard. And after you save it, we can all see your notes. Okay, so it's very easy to use. Now that you learned how to use the Jamboard, let's turn to our first question. This question is based on the exercise we just did. Um, I'd like you to share what you found using the UNBL data collection. How much carbon is there in protected areas in your country? You might find um, that there are some limitations on the information that you can glean from this overlay analysis. Um, please add, add the conclusion that you think you can come to from the data available here. For example, uh, you might not have the exact amount of number of the carbon density within protected areas, but in your observation, especially how well do you think the protected areas are covering high carbon density areas in your country? And do you think um, the protected areas are maintaining more high carbon density areas than the places that are not protected? Something like that. We'd like to hear your thoughts. Now, please go ahead, um, access the Jamboard and add your answers um, as the sticky notes. We have several minutes for you to add responses. Let's get started. From the English Jamboard, I received um, a chant from Pakistan. He left notes about, um, let me read it, since 2010, 21 million square uh, kilometers of protected and conserved areas, or 42% of the global total has been added. This is a data source from UNEP report on Pakistan. Um, yeah, I think this is the overall situation of the um, protected and conserved areas, right? Uh, what about the carbon density covered by protected areas in Pakistan? Uh, and another one, while well, globally the target of 17% of land protection has been met, Pakistan is behind the global average, less than 8% against a target of 10% of coastal and marine areas have been conserved. Thanks for sharing that. Um, then keep them coming. We'll give you more time to do this. Does anyone have any difficulties in accessing the Jamboard? Um, if you have, if you met any issues, you can raise your hand or send a private message to my colleague Andre. Do 
Okay, I think maybe we can move on to the next question now. Thank you. Um, let's move on to the second question. You can see there are several duplicated slides, so you might need to click several times to make it to the next question. Our next question is actually several questions in one, and you can respond to all or one that is most interesting to you. Okay, I'll read the question now. What do you find useful in this map you accessed through the Yongbyal data collection? What other information would you need to guide actions in your country? Do you have national data in your country that could also be used to answer this question? You can answer all of them or either one of them. Um, also use the sticky note function to add your answer to the Jamboard. We also have several minutes here for you to add your responses in. And I see one responses now. Eco region lists and biome names are provided in the map. The map also shows the above ground and blue ground carbon density on the global scale. Very good. Yes, that's uh, what we try to offer you uh, at the global level and the public platform. Um, I see, yeah, I see Fernando is asking the link again, and we just shared it in the chat. Please keep your answers coming. We still have time for you to write your notes. If you have difficulty in accessing the Jamboard, you can also uh, put the comment in the chat and we'll, we will read it and add it to the Jamboard. The comments on having difficulties in accessing the Jamboard. Uh, no worries, you can also use the chat in the Zoom, on the Zoom to add your comments. We'll help you to uh, move your comments to the Jamboard. Yeah, one, one maybe reflection on the map that we see currently is the fact that um, the, the, what we're seeing is an overlay. And um, we're not getting the statistics back from this overlay. So that's kind of maybe a limitation of the map that I would see in this moment, but, you know, maybe others, but it's very useful in terms of kind of getting an understanding of what's happening in the area of interest. Um, but you're not getting that alongside the kind of um, the graphics uh, that you might get with the dynamic metrics at, the, uh, at a later stage so often it's very useful to use this sort of map, but also in conjunction with that kind of statistical um, uh, analysis that happens at the same time. We have a question in Spanish from Darío. And to respond to the first question on carbon stocks, what is the carbon layer that we need to select? Um, the sorry, D, go ahead. No, I'll interrupt. I, I was just trying to turn it to you. <laughs> no problem. Well, I mean, this question is very much dependent on what what aspect of carbon you're looking at. So you might be looking at specifically above ground carbon, in which case you would look at the above ground carbon layer. You might be looking at a combination of above ground and below ground. And in that case, you might use them together. Um, there's also um, data sets on soil organic carbon stock as well in there. Um, so it really is dependent on the analysis that you're doing and really understanding what these different carbon layers are offering. 
Um, so I would be loath to tell you there's one that you should be using, but rather you should be looking at whatever what the specifics of the question you're asking and thinking about which layer is most relevant for that. Okay, I now see um, comments are coming on the Spanish Jamboard. Cassandra, do you want to read it? Thank you. Claro que sí. En el Jamboard de Español, a la segunda... In the Spanish Jamboard says about the usefulness of this map. I can calculate the portion of organic carbon on the ground that could be potentially vulnerable to changes in uh, land use when mineral, uh, when there's a depletion of minerals or when there's a change in the density of minerals. Yes, and when you search carbon uh, on the layers list, you can see there are more uh, carbon related global data sets available rather than uh, these suggestions, these layers we want in the data collection. Very useful data there, and um, you can explore the options by searching on the search box. Great. Great. We have time for one final question or um, a reading of the response from one more participant, and then we will need to go to our final close for the day. Thank you. Yes, I see there are more comments on the Spanish Jamboard. Um, Cassandra, do you mind read one more? As, así es. También nos han comentado acerca de cuánto carbono mantienen las áreas protegidas. How much carbon is... Uh, stored in your country. Uh, in Colombia, a national level study was done in 2010, yet these are very broad estimates due to the lack of uh, data about uh, local uh, land plots. But there's a national inventory that's underway to be able to conduct new measurements of biomass and forests in Colombia. So there's an additional comment, and I think uh, it's from Mexico. Dee, you have the floor. Great. Thanks so much for sharing this with us. Um, and thank you all for your great contributions. This concludes our final exercise of the day. And to wrap up this session, I'd like to turn it back over to Amber. Amber, over to you. Great. Thank you, Dee. And thanks, Cassandra, and everyone, Oscar, and everyone else um, online today for all of your help. It's really been a team effort, so it's been fantastic. Um, and I want to thank you all for your participation today. Um, it, it's so amazing to see folks from all around the world joining us and interacting with us um, and really engaging in these labs. So as a reminder, here is the um, contact information for me and my colleagues at RSET and UNDP. Um, if you have further questions, feel free to email us. You can also find all the information about the training, including the links to download the materials on the website that we've mentioned before. Um, and my colleague Andres is dropping um, these links into the chat as well. So do please come back and check um, for the recordings and any further information as needed. And um, a reminder as well, do please send in your homework assignment too, um, in order to be eligible for the certificate of completion for this lab. And um, again, you can follow uh, us on um, Twitter at NASA RSET for more information. Um, about upcoming um, RSET trainings, and um, our, you could check out our sister programs, Develop and Severe. But do um, please join us for tomorrow's ses final intermediate session. And um, if you had registered for the um, final advanced lab, lab two, and next week as well. So have a, a nice day, uh, morning, evening, wherever you are in the world. And, and thank you again for joining us. It's been really great to interact with you all. So um, we'll, we'll see you soon, hopefully. Thank you.